Aurora's burst at Southampton's brand new Ocean Terminal. Over at the Mayflower Terminal, where we usually go from, is Artemis. And there's Artemis heading out just ahead of us. Starting in Stavanger, our Norwegian coastal voyage takes us further north than we've ever been, to the Spitsbergen archipelago. Aurora is moored in Stavanger's old harbour, and for the morning we choose to take the ship's trip to Flor Ogfiera. It's a 20 minute fast catamaran ride to an island where there's a restaurant in a very unusual garden. The garden was created originally in an old quarry by the owner of a local plant nursery who was trying to persuade his wife that she could after all come and live in the house on this island. Some of the plants are in pots and can be taken in for the winter and some of the plants are planted anew every year but quite a lot of them actually grow here all the year round. Over the years they've learned a lot of tricks to protect the plants from the worst of the weather and make the most of the warmth that they do get in the summer and they actually do harvest fruit The carp are taken in for the winter, but that's to protect them against wild mink rather than the cold. The family now run this as a restaurant, where you're ferried across at fixed times for lunch and dinner, and enjoy the gardens before and after your meal. The lunch guests are arriving and we'll be back on that ferry. The sail back into Stavanger gives us good close-up views of various features of the city, including Aurora and the Costa ship that was in with us. After lunch on board, we decide to go for a stroll on our own around the city starting with St. Swithin's Cathedral. The Romanesque part of the church dates from the early 12th century. The Gothic part was added after a major fire towards the end of the 13th century. We decided not to visit the old wooden part of Stavanger on this occasion, but just went for a little stroll round the colourful, cobbled streets of the town. Next morning we're in Romsdal Fjord, approaching the town of Andalsnes. This is about 50 miles from the open sea. Andalsnes itself is nothing much to see. It was very badly beaten up in the Second World War. But its setting is spectacular and it's the jumping off point to visit Romsdal. We took a ship's tour and our first stop was at Trollwegen, the Troll Wall. This is a thousand foot sheer rock wall which has been conquered now by rock climbers. 
Our coach then took us on the Troll Stiggen, the Troll Ladder, an extremely vertiginous road opened in 1936 and only opened during the summer months. It's traditional to build these little rock towers or troll towers to encourage the trolls to be on your side. Then it's back down again, the way we came. Back in Andelsnes. In Norway, this state monopoly is the only company allowed to sell alcoholic drinks stronger than 4.7%. Next morning we're in Trondheim Norway's third largest city and at one time the capital of the country. Munksholmen was originally a monastery and is now a restaurant. It's Sunday, hence the church bells at Trondheim's Nidaros Cathedral. Started in the 11th century the cathedral is still the site of Norwegian coronations. From the old town bridge you get great views of the wharves on both sides of the Nidelva River. The oldest of these are 18th century. As it's Sunday morning, there aren't many people around yet. Trondheim is home to the world's only bicycle lift. We've still no idea how it actually works because, unfortunately, nobody turned up to use it while we were there. At the top of the hill is the Christiansen Fortress, originally built at the end of the 17th century. There were preparations for some sort of military event that was about to start. During the Second World War, the Germans used the fortress as a place of execution for Norwegian partisans, and there was a service going on. Back down to the city centre before getting the shuttle bus back to the ship, ready for our sail up into the Arctic Circle. At 78 degrees north, New Alessand on Spitsbergen is as far north as we've ever been, less than 1500 miles from the North Pole. Politically, Spitsbergen is part of the Kingdom of Norway, but the Spitsbergen Treaty of 1925 gives every signatory country the right to establish bases here and to mine for minerals. The train is a reminder that New Alessand was originally a coal mining town. Members of the ship's crew were stationed to make sure we didn't stray off the official path. The northernmost post office in the world, but its franking machine wasn't working. 
The buildings in New Alisand now house the various Arctic research stations of the treaty countries. The statue is Rald Amundsen, the Norwegian polar explorer. The North Pole Hotel is the most northerly hotel in the world. On our way out, the captain took us right up to the edge of the ice. At latitude 69 degrees north, Tromso styles itself the capital of the Arctic. The main part of the city is on an island in the fjord. Having taken the cable car 420 meters up, we have good views of our ship and the so-called Arctic Cathedral. This church was built in 1965, and it's not really a cathedral at all, just a parish church, but its striking design is emblematic of Tromso. Back to the city centre now, using Tromso's excellent public transport system, and there's a craft fair going on in the main market square. The tiny Varfruerkirke is the northernmost Catholic cathedral in the world. The oldest cinema in Norway is still in regular use. The Domkirke from the mid-19th century, Tromso's actual cathedral. We had lunch in Skarven, a famous restaurant and bar. Whale soup, lovely, but don't tell friends of the earth. The Old Wharves, or Bruggen. Bergen, from a thousand feet up at the top of the funicular railway. The toy funicular seemed to follow the real one in real time. Back at sea level for a stroll round, this is Bergen's Cathedral, the Domkirke. It was Sunday morning, which is probably why it's so quiet. The fish market was open, with all the usual fish and whale and so on, and on this occasion lots of fresh fruit. We decided to explore the far side of the harbour for a change, and came across the new kirke, the new church, a Baroque church dating from the end of the 18th century.
Along the harbour are some historical preserved ships and some other old buildings. Bergen's World Heritage Site is Bruggen, its collection of warehouses dating from the Hanseatic period. We decided to stroll through there on our way back to the ship. Rosenkrantz Tower is part of the Bergenhus Fortress. The oldest part is King Hawkon's Hall. Aurora's bulbous bow definitely needs some attention. We pass under the Askoy Bridge on our way to our final port of call. Aidfjord at the head of Hardangerfjord, and Aurora towers over this little village. And here's Fred Olsen coming to join us. Our P&O trip takes us first of all to the Hardanger Vida Centre. This place is so ecological, it has goats grazing on its roof. Next stop, the Susan Dam, over a kilometre long. This is one of Norway's largest hydroelectric schemes. Voringfoss Waterfall, a drop of 182 metres, and according to the Norwegian Tourist Board, Norway's most popular waterfall. Back to Aidfjord and Aurora, ready for our sail back to Southampton and home. 